Hey guys, thank you for stopping by. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. And I hope you enjoy this interview. Welcome, Prof. Good to thank see you. you. It's been quite a while. So let's yeah. get started. Interpret the April inflation data as primary as possible, as basic as possible, that was um, released by the NBS yesterday because it's all, you know, all these technical, technical things. But the issue is that Nigerians are choking from okay. inflation. And I'm borrowing that word from, I was in the market on Saturday last week. In fact, people almost mobbed me. Telling me, Nancy, are you know, in this country, what are you telling people? This, this, this. Madam Nancy, where have you been? He, I was like, I'm not in this administration. You know, and a, a man actually said, Madam Nancy, I'm choking. That was his exact, I am choking. We are choking. He practically did this. So I'm borrowing the word from him. I don't know his name. But on, uh, make our viewers understand it. Well, and I mean, I share your, your concern and people's concern about where we are with inflation. But I can see light at the end of the tunnel. Because why is all the indices? There are five indices, five sub-inflation indices. One is the composite, infl uh, sorry, composite price index, mm -hmm. which is called the headline inflation. The second one is food sub-basket index, which is the most problematic one, highly volatile. It's always sitting up there and cruising at very high altitude for many, many years. Then the third one is urban inflation, a uh, core, core inflation, which has all indices minus inflationary mm -hmm. ones, you know, uh, which is minus, minus food. energy and, and food, mm -hmm. minus those volatile ones. Then you have the two ones left, which is the urban inflation mm -hmm. and rural inflation mm -hmm. index. Now, urban has got so hot that it is even higher than the than the headline inflation. And it's just because it tells you that the theater of inflation is in the urban areas. That's where the heat is most. But having said that though, all of these five indices went up. All of them, they went up compared to 12 months ago. So this is called year on year in this in, in, uh, inflation mm -hmm. figure. So when you compare the figure today with what it was in 2013, uh, April, they all should increase, all of them with no exception. But when you look at month to month, which is what happened in March and what happened in April, all of them were pointing down. And that's why I say there is light in the end of the tunnel. What has happened is that it may take another one or two months before their rate of fall would impact, will impact the on the real figure. Yeah. So that, that when that rate of fall, month on month, will now sh begin to show a fall on the 12 months measurement. So that is one. But if you want to characterize the, look at those five. One thing I have to tell you is that there are picture, there are national picture and there are subnational picture, which is the state level. Mm. So there are variabilities which you can understand when you look at four axes, Lagos, Abuja, Kaduna, Kanu. That is what I call the north south, the south north inflation corridor, high inflation corridor. And it is high inflation corridor because of the intense consumption in that corridor. You know, consumption center is Abuja. And then you know there are several imported inflation, there is imported inflation, which are not just processed food, but other things, tire, you know, car market, but they, that's the, where they are most consumed. And then midway, you'll find the highest point being Kwara and Kogi. Because at Kwara and Kogi mm. is midway, yeah. where the foreign imported thing meets with high cost uh, uh, if, uh, food item coming down from the north. So that is why you have that. That is the hottest corridor. But you have a frontier, northern frontier uh, corridor, which is a low food inflation corridor, because that's where our food are produced. But then they are taken away by these 100 million francophone countries surrounding us. So there's a little, there's a little permutation there. Then you have a south, south uh, what you call Lagos-Calabar corridor. Now this Lagos-Calabar coastal corridor, 
is, is medium inflation because the, the imported inflation doesn't hit them. Whatever is coming into Lagos is coming in Calabar, it's coming in, uh, in uh, Port Harcourt. So, you, uh, so that, but you still, and then you don't have good road connecting them that could reduce. But when they do this coastal road, it will also bring, bring movement of food across there will, will, bring, will bring prices down. Then you have the Eastern Northern Corridor, which is the one for me going, to, going through Benue, going through. Benue is a low inflation fair corridor. It's okay. a food basket. No, that, no, it's the food. Yeah, there's basket. food moving up mm -hmm. and down. That. That's mm -hmm. our food basket. Yeah. So it's always, so people wonder, oh, if it's on the same belt with, um, with Kogi, Kwara, and Benue, why is it that they have such a huge difference between them? Is a major food basket and it travels in that in that. But corridor. Kogi suffers high infl food inflation. No, yeah, prof. yeah, it Suffer is because one that it doesn't produce that much. It doesn't produce anything near what Benue produces, but it is on the traffic. It was on the high the corridor. But the traffic so, is the traffic. No, so, sorry to cut you short, the, Prof. The cost of transportation. Okay, so logistics. It's triple. That yes, the cost of transportation. And if you look at inflation itself, if you get that quantum called inflation, seventeen point eight percent of it is food then about 5.9% is transport and that. So their transport cost mm -hmm. is very intense in that corridor, moving not only imported goods, but also food. The food cost is coming down, is increasing, coming down, then imported things. So that is the corridor, consumption corridor. Mm -hmm. They will always continue to have high inflation. So your explanation now has at least made us understand what's happening around states because inflation yes, around what yes. you just gradually explained now are uh, those figures that we're seeing in states what are the causes of those figures mm. so i appreciate that now the second question is let me go back to what you have said in terms of month on month decrease one would expect that the month on month decrease also would impact the headline inflation because it all adds up why should we wait for two three months to see the change in the headline inflation. Prof, you understand what well, I mean? The yes. headline inflation <laughs> is mm -hmm. the composite price index. Which is it the consumer, all, all of every them. Every item. Yes, I understand every that. Item. Let me explain why it couldn't go down as you expected. There are four major inflation, types of inflation active. Remember, we are in stagflation. Yes. One is the one to do with money supply. Because the classic definition of inflation is more money, money chasing yeah, fewer shares, goods. Shares so the, the central bank is sucking out all that oxygen in the money supply. That's why it's do, using open market operation to suck it out from the banks. Then treasury bills are being sold in trillions. They, they're taking the money out. So what do you so call that, that kind that of is, inflation? Uh, no, that means that the, the money that people have to throw around and cost more and more inflation to chase this price fewer of these goods are diminishing. But that is only one part of the inflation. That is the demand pool inflation. But you have cost push inflation, where the cost of uh, energy, which is diesel, cost of petrol, cost of transport, mm. all that cost, cost of uh, the power, power is gone up, everything is going up. That, in fact, not only that they impact supply of food, but also impact manufacturing operations. So manufacturing prices are going up because these ones are going up. Monetary policy can't help you there. It's only fiscal policy. You understand? So, and then the, whatever you produce up there, we have to transport them down to the country. And the cost of transporting, not only that a, tr a bus or truck carrying food, grains, from Katsina area coming in down to the south, instead of one day, it could take them two days, bad road, and then the cost of the fuel has gone up. So we can't even afford our own food because of the cost of transporting them down. So that is that. Then you come to the third factor, the third inflation. You have mm -hmm. the imported inflation. Oh, the, because we are an import-dependent economy, we are constantly importing. We are importing mm -hmm. more than we export. That's why you have, it affects your balance of payment. So what that means, anything you import at a very high price has an inflation pass through straight away to the consumer. And then again, the corridor of that import is what I have told you, you know, yeah. that's where it's, mm. it's hottest. And uh, then you now have the fourth one, which is still a demand pool inflation, but it is a cross-border, cross-border demand pool inflation. It works in the opposite direction of the domestic demand pool inflation. Why is that? Our current, first of all, about 100 million francophone cities surround Nigeria, all those countries surrounding us. 
And you know that agroecology is very adverse, so they're importing our food. And the price differential that encourages them to import is one Naira was buying three francs sefa eight years ago. It can't buy one sefa. It's only buying 0 0.8. So it's like our, our money is 80% devalued. Mm -hmm. And if it's devalued, it's cheap. So that means them. our food is cheaper. It's for them. very, very cheap. They don't need to go to farm anymore. So they buy our food. And the small power they have, which is not as much as Nigeria, they use that small power to add value to it. And they start exporting some of those. And the tragedy for us is that we can't even get dollar when they're when they buying them. And then you cannot stop them because we are bound uh, by uh, treaty, ECOWAS treaty. Mm. Not that we should, but the strategy to deal with that is to add value at what level. So that if once value is added, they have to pay tax, you know, there's duty, and then we get the employment and all of that. So, so those are kind of strategies that can help in that case. Okay, Prof, let me now come to the CBN's uh, prescriptions to tackle inflation. At the last MPCs, we've seen Cardoso increase NPR by 6%. And he has also signaled there'll be further rate hikes. Do you think that those prescriptions that we've seen at least since January has helped? And if it has helped, explain why it has helped. Because Nigerians are not seeing that there's anything coming down. And a lot of people have also said to the uh, MPC, we have a next meeting at least in the next few days, that please, can you just cool down on this hiking of rates because manufacturers, you just explained also earlier on, manufacturers are really, which will also pass on to consumers. So how do you expect Cardoso and his team to be able to balance that out? And have, has the CBS prescriptions worked? Or are they working, seemingly working? I, I would say that they are working. But not everybody will agree with that. Mm. Let me tell you. First of all, ECOWAS macroeconomic convergence criteria are 10 of them. One of them says you should have a positive real interest rate. We don't have a positive, we have negative. So what it means is this, if you are going to target investors from abroad to uh, come into portfolio investment and bring in flux, inflow of dollar, you have to give them a reasonable rate because you are telling me to put my money here to earn uh, you know, 12% or 13% or 15, even if it is 20%. But the inflation is 33%. So I give you my money to invest here, and then when I come a year after, I have lost 13%. So it doesn't make sense to foreign investors. So, and then also, the, the rate at which banks lend is so far below the inflation rate. So you have negative real interest rate. So two things are going on. We want to bring inflation down. If you have to bring inflation down because whatever penny you give to people disappears. They can't buy anything with it. So inflation drags more people into poverty than any other thing government does. Inflation is the biggest poverty accelerator that pushes people into multidimensional poverty and into uh, 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 extreme poverty. So you have to fight it. And then if you fight inflation, you also give confidence to investors that their money, there will be a stable regime of pri prices mm -hmm. when they can plan for their investment into your country. So that case of fighting inflation is unassailable, but it is the call to manage the consequence of it. So that's why I'm saying that, yes. Now look at what Central Bank has done. Central Bank, um, uh, well, they decided to exit domestic finance intervention because that was what was dealing with the the market failure. You know, market failure in access to finance and mm -hmm. agriculture suffers the most. So they were pumping money through so, domestic so, finance mm -hmm. intervention mm -hmm. to, 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 to get that, that area, to get the manufacturers mm -hmm. and producers, you know, to, to start go. working. But, because there was a failure but of now they policy. are withdrawing, Central Bank is withdrawing mm -hmm. from domestic finance mm -hmm. intervention. So which means that nature abhors a vacuum. A vacuum. So something has to fill that vacuum. And they filling it in a time of adversity because when you are targeting inflation and withdrawing domestic finance intervention, you are now saying to people, well, I'm sorry, I can't help you. So that's why they now have to have other ways of pushing credit to the private sector, like consumer, um, that consumer explosion, you know, mm. the uh, consumer credit scheme, which is coming in. So that will target, you can use that to target manufacturers and push low cost lending to them and then consumer, enable consumers to buy their products. Because one thing is for them to borrow money at high cost, they produce the thing, and then nobody can buy it. No. So that is even worse. 
So those no. measures are coming. Then second thing is that they also fought, you know, inflation is price, mm -hmm. much as monetary policy rates and all these other rates and inflation. So they're all price. So that you've got to resolve supply and demand mm -hmm. mechanisms in, in that. So they now have to focus on shoring up supply of dollars. So that's why the CBN went for the commercial banks to close their net open position to 20%. And then but some of them, they have to sell their excess uh, dollar. And that's why they went for Binance, to stop hemorrhaging the economy, because they saw about 26 billion moving into the economy and they couldn't. And that's why they're moving and shaking down, because you have to shake down while you are also bringing in more dollar. Okay. So all that domicile, that huge dollar, which probably they use those uh, okay. excess listing to buy, are being shaken down. So okay. inflation is that's not inflation. They, Monitor, the forex price is coming down okay, prof, as a consequence. Prof, just hold on uh, your to continue. How confident are you about the monetary authority in bringing down inflation? And I'm asking that question on the premise of um, Olayemi Cardoso saying that he signaled that the target inflation for the end of the year is about 24%. And I'm looking at where inflation is at now, 33%. Government's budget uh, inflation target is about 20. Is it? No, 21% actually. Okay, I think Kalaya Mikadoso said 24. Government is saying as fiscal policy is saying 20, 21. How confident are you that central bank governor with his team at the MPC will bring down inflation? I understand, I understand what you have explained in terms mm -hmm. of month on month that their policies are working, but many Nigerians would also disagree. But are you confident that? Uh, they will be able to bring down inflation, despite our inflation being structural. Well, it's the thing is that there are measures are impacting inflation, except that we haven't seen it on the year to year, mm -hmm. but you have seen it on the month to month, without a doubt. They will come down, but the, the baseline is when you look at core inflation. Core inflation is 26%. The headline inflation is 40%, is it 33 33%. 33%. So there is that headroom because the call excluded the very highly volatile items. Which is food. Which and is cook. food and uh, uh, transport. Mm. And transport is engineered by high uh, 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 energy price, uh, by high pet uh, petrol and uh, mm. diesel price. And you've seen diesel price coming down and they possibly Possibly with Dangote coming in now on stream, fully on stream, those two prices could come down significantly to help transportation costs come down as well. And then the energy costs, uh, the, the other cost, which is uh, in electricity cost, mm. we're going to see how that plays out because the jury is out on the, how electricity cost is going to be tempered by, by, by the current situation. But those two, those ones are, are contributing to on 25% of the inflation that you actually see. So what I would say is that the baseline where I am expecting that inflation to come down to is that about 24, 26, because 26 is core inflation. But don't forget that those are not the only thing that are going to be affected because when the uh, interest, uh, the exchange rate is coming down, the imported inflation is also coming down mm -hmm. because the, the, what you use to import is coming no, down. Lesser. And then if you are producing and targeting export, that is also improving. And if that's where remittance is going to double as the governor, as the governor of central bank uh, predicts from the action that they're taking, it means that there'll be more inflow of dollars. And then if the energy situation gets more efficient, the NMPC operations on both crude and gas get more efficient, there will be more dollars coming to the excess mm -hmm. crude account. And that also means that our, our foreign reserves will, be, will have more accretion to foreign reserves. So all of the, the cumulative effect of these things will have a disproportionate uh, in, in, impact on the inflation. So the net inflation might actually be heading down uh, to that, but I don't know whether it will happen in the next few months, but I know that in the next 12 months, that the likelihood that will become close to, to, how, to what rate? To that, well, 20, 25, 26, 24, that, that top of the high. area. But I'm, I don't see that it will go to 21. Which is still please, high. Which even is the, even what, this is what the government is, at is high. saying. Is at the high yeah. rate. 21 even, at, inflation at 21% in Nigeria is still high. Well, yeah. I know, I know, but mm -hmm. Rome wasn't built in a day. 
the, the, look, we have insecurity in Nigeria that you don't have anywhere else in, 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 uh, in the region to the mm. scale of, of what we have. And we have, we are feeding 300 million people, not 200. We are feeding 300 million populations. Okay, Prof, I, and have, then, mm, I have like five minutes with you now because I have another interview on par. Um, mm. Let me ask you this question because I've actually also been looking at it. The government will just will be one year in a few days' time. Um, President Tinubu removed fuel subsidy. Uh, we're seeing exchange rates volatility. Uh, we've also seen price of diesel go up and down. We've seen power tariffs go up. Do you think, looking back now, since almost a year that the president has removed uh, fuel subsidy, do you think that the gains outweigh the losses? And let me explain. Since that announcement, the president, since the announcement of petrol subsidy removal, prices have sky skyrocketed. You agree with me, it's also added to inflation of because course, of course. and all of that. Still, the government is paying subsidy one way or the other. They haven't Correct. even told us where they are getting the money from. Correct. I was um, uh, reading a Kenyan newspaper, was it yesterday or so? The, um, the Kenyan government is dipping its hands into the stabilization fund to avoid petrol price going higher. So if you take a look at it, it's like a chicken and an egg and an, uh, you know, egg situation. Do you think that the removal of petrol subsidy at the end of the, of the day was now a good decision? Based in mind that we've, we've, inflation has skyrocketed over 10%. Labor is asking for more money. Even if they pay, even if government pays, the, agrees to the 48 or even the 54, that will not take an average Nigerian home. So if you take a look at it, looking back, perhaps I, I wouldn't say whether it was a good decision or not, but would the government have done it better? Wouldn't it have been okay? Just leave petrol, let us be buying that uh, at that price. And other things are moderated. Prof, I hope you understand no, what I'm I saying. I do, I do. Do you understand? Just let because, me answer yes, your question. Yes. Nigeria, a, a year ago, if I can describe it, was in a sick bed in an intensive unit and pushed to the edge of a cliff. Today, Nigeria has come off that cliff, come off that intensive unit, and is in a recovery position. That's how I can describe what has happened. Because it didn't, it, it only now that you actually know how badly the, the, the depth of the pit where we were. Secondly, on the first day the president was coming in, he made the same, he was chastised by fire, just the same way as uh, Buhari was. He had to find 600 million billion to give governors so that they can go and start running their country. He had to do the same. That was why the removal of that subsidy gave him the money to raise the, what they give to the states from 700 billion to 1.1, 1.2 billion. And the governors had to now go home and start running their states. They would not have been able to do that. So the thing is that we're not comparing like to like. The changes and transformations happened at macroeconomic level, happened at international economic development level, and then happened to, so there are so many things. Does it not worry you that the, lead, the borrowing that we were having, we don't have that alarm and screaming every month that we have to, that the money has gone up and we are, our, our service, debt service is going up. We can't pay salaries. We can't, government revenue has gone up by two, almost two billion. They're getting about two trillion every, every month. Every month, yeah. Our debt to GDP ratio, our revenue to GDP ratio was about 7% before. It's now over 10%. So things are happening. But the enormity of the but challenge it's not only became the apparent. People. It's not the impacting people, oh no. the people. Prof. Yeah, but the thing yeah. is coming down. What I'm saying, a, I, I mean, my heart bleeds when I think about what people say. People the, I go to market, I, I get prof, angry. We are suffering. I get angry when I go to, I go to market to buy my food. Yeah. Every, my own family is in London. Yes. And I scream when I go there. I will go 100,000. I couldn't buy you can't, a food trolley. You can't, you've been looking trolley, for what you have. A food you bought, yeah, yes. I know. It's so expensive. But what I'm saying to you, it would have been worse. It could have been worse. Okay, mm -hmm. let me give you one more. For more than 20 years, we have been saying, when are you getting these refineries back? When are you getting this? Suddenly, in less than one year, Paracourt is, is producing now. Uh, and Kanduna is going to come. What, they're all now coming. This is that we are stories. We are hearing stories. Now, the new sheriff is in town. A new sheriff is in town, and they know what, what it means. Because you are either in or out. If you don't give me a result, you are out. So, I mean, you, you saw it. 
when he did retreat, he told the ministers, you know, I'm sorry if you don't work with Hadis. And look at the same thing. You know, we have this whole performance management since the time of uh, Jonathan and all that. What did it, now, the, that thing has been taken to the court of public opinion. You want to see a different, it's a different climate and different regime. Okay. Prof, I hope I can continue this conversation with you, but we will schedule another time okay. because this is a serious um, um, topic and I haven't really, you know, looked at the different uh, uh, facets of this interview, but thank you very much for My coming. Pleasure. I want to talk about another issue too, which you actually also <laughs> raised, the electricity tariffs, and my guest uh, will join me uh, shortly. So let's quickly take a break to bring in uh, my guest and we will continue the conversation to stay. Thank you for watching. In case this is your first time watching us, thank you. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, drop your comment as well as like, and most of all, share our content.